All right, we're on the notes for Unit 2. We're on Part 4, still covering TIGs C2F and C2G. So I will collect data and make measurements with accuracy and precision. And this one, more importantly, I will express and manipulate chemical quantities using dimensional analysis, scientific notation, and significant figures. All right, dimensional analysis. It sounds really ugly, and it's not. It's pretty easy. So dimensional analysis, basically what we're doing is we're converting units. We're going from units of one measurement to the units of another one, <coughs> whether it's moles to grams, grams to moles, hours to minutes, milliliters to liters. That's what we're doing here. So let's say they give us a question of um, can you change 3.179 hours to minutes? Well, if it were a nice even number, we could do that probably in our heads because we're, we're really familiar with hours and minutes. But 3.179 is kind of a weird number. So the next thing you do is you draw the dimensional analysis grid that looks like what's on the on the PowerPoint. <coughs> and you take what number they gave you and you put it in the upper left hand corner with its unit of measurement. So we put 3.179 hours in the upper left hand corner of our little grid. And whatever labels in the upper left corner, we're going to move it also down and copy it down into the lower right corner. So whatever label is in the upper left corner has to be copied diagonally to the lower right corner. This is arranging your labels correctly for canceling out. Remember, we're going to be talking about fractions. And if you have a 4 on top and a 4 on bottom, remember that they cancel out. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that even works for units of measurement. So 1 hour or hour divided by hour is 1, which is kind of freakish, but there it is. Put the label of what you're converting to in the upper right corner. So we want to go from hours to minutes, so we're going to put the minutes in the upper right corner. So you see it labeled right here. So we have 3.179 hours upper left. We took the hours and we copied them down to the lower right. And what we want to change to is put up right above that. Now what you have to have is you have to show the numerical relationship that exists between our two labels. We have minutes and we have hours. And everybody knows that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we put the 60 with the minutes, 60 minutes in one hour. 60 minutes in one hour, aren't they exactly equal to each other? Yeah, so it's like, again, putting the 4 over 4. 4 over 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 60 minutes divided by one hour, they're the exact same thing. So it's 1. So what we're doing by kind of working with this stuff, this dimensional analysis, is we're altering the unit of measurement that we're working with. So we can, it'll, the answer will look different. It won't be 3.179 hours, but since you're changing units of measurement, it'll be a new number with the new unit of measurement. But the quantity, the amount you have, is still the same. Then you're going to cancel any labels that appear in both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator of the grid. So ours is on top, ours is on bottom. We can cancel those out. And look, if you look there, the only unit of measurement we have left is minutes, which is what they wanted us to get the answer in. Multiply everything together that's above the grid line, so all the numerators are multiplied together. Then you're going to multiply all the denominators along the bottom. And if it makes you happy, underneath that 3.179 hours, you can put a 1 and make it look like the fraction. Just so, you know, if that makes you get it right, it makes more sense to you, then put that 1 down there. So multiply everything together that's below the grid line, and then you're going to divide. You have the numerator divided by the, no the denominator. So you're going to divide the top number by the bottom number. So we have 3.179, the hours cancels out, times 60, and we're going to get 190.74 minutes. And it looks like my little grid line is off a little bit, but I'm not going to go back and fix it right now. And we'll do lots of these in class. Aren't you so happy? Then you're going to express your answer in the same number of sig figs as were given in the original problem. Usually for us, a good rule of thumb is two to three digits to the right of the decimal works pretty well. And we'll talk about significant figures, and I'll show you how to get them, and we'll do a little bit on there. But most of our work that we'll do, if you'll keep two digits to the right of the decimal, I'll accept your answer. The most important key here is you need to be sure that your answer has a label, a unit of measurement. Did I say that you need to make sure you have a unit of measurement on your numbers, your answers? Make sure you do that. Oh my gosh, it's another ending. 